what's shaking my friends my name is Shay welcome back to my channel today I'm going to talk about my most disappointing reads of 2021 so most disappointing to me means that I had really high expectations for the book and they did not come near meeting those expectations I'm not gonna go over each of these books individually about what they're about but I will tell you a little bit about why I disliked these books so I have a ton and you'll notice in my uh, worst books of the year I have a ton of these books and I did not have a very good reading year in 2021 and I'm hoping for a much better reading year in 2022 but let's get into some of the most disappointing books of the year so listen I have almost decided to stop reading hype books because they never ever meet my expectations and one of the books this year would be The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood and this is a very popular romance book that is going around everywhere and everybody's giving it five stars and they're loving it and everything but I absolutely I didn't hate it uh, I think I wound up giving it three stars but the whole book was really cringy. I felt like it was not in any way believable. Uh, there was one steamy scene which was very very cringy and I just it was not my cup of tea. I didn't get along with the characters, didn't care for the characters, did not like the main character and to in order to like a book I feel like you have to like the main character but it was just okay. There was nothing to write home about for me. The next disappointing read was Cytonic by Brandon Sanderson. So I of course love Skyward. I love Star Sight, but Cytonic felt like such a filler book. I did not really, it's not that I didn't like the new characters that were introduced. I just wanted to go back to some old characters and I just didn't get what I wanted from it. Like I said, I felt like it felt like a filler book. But I'm still going to read the fourth one, hoping everything wraps up well. The next disappointing read is going to be The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. This is another book that is extremely hyped up. Uh, I think it won the Hugo Award. And it just was not for me. Uh, there is multiple POVs in the book. And like I said, if you don't like one POV in a book, I've said this multiple times, it really hinders the enjoyment of the book. And so I gave it three stars. I thought it was okay, but I don't, didn't enjoy my time enough where I think I will continue on. I don't think I will continue on with the series, but for all those that love it, fantastic. Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. Uh, I fully expected to give this book five stars. I don't know, something about the cover was beautiful and the premise sounded amazing and all of that and I finally read it and it was just not my cup of tea. It was 50% of the book was talking about how she was going to prepare to lose her virginity to an older man and I did not care for that. So there's that. The next uh, book is going to be The Vanishing Half by Britt it. I thought this was just okay but I really had really high expectations for this. I enjoyed the overall story but I felt like it just something was missing from it and it, I had no problem with the writing. I just felt like I also just didn't care for the characters that much which made me overall not care for the story. For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. I think it's Witten. Um, I also fully expected to give this book five stars. I did not really care for this book. I gave it three stars. It was fine. Uh, there is a sequel to it which I will not be reading. I just didn't care for the characters. I didn't, uh, there was a, basically it's a romance story for majority of it and I just didn't buy their romance and so if you don't buy it, you buy their romance then you can't like the romance story. Another Shocker was The Jasmine Throne by Tasha Suri. This is a sapphic adult fantasy novel that I just didn't care for. I thought there were slow parts and I just didn't get into the plot of the story. I just didn't care. There was nothing wrong with the writing or anything of that nature. Some people I've heard the reviews on this and they really really love it and it just was not for me. The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodore Goss. I've heard multiple people say that they love this book and I gave it three stars. I thought it was fine but I fully expected to love it but I really think 
that historical anything is just not my genre and so that's why I just didn't care for it. Uh, I didn't really care for, you know, the whole story is about these lady friends that are solving a mystery and I just didn't uh, mesh with those characters very well. A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison, I think it is. It's a middle grade. Again, it's a middle grade, but I've heard this middle grade hyped up a lot. And so again, another hyped up book that just did not live up to the hype for me. I thought it was fine. It's a great for um, that age group of a reader, but just was not for me. A hot take, but it's going to be The Bear and the Nightingale and The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden. I read The Bear and the Nightingale and I thought it was fine. I actually enjoyed like 60% of the book and then didn't care for the other 40% and but decided to continue on and after The Girl in the Tower I just can't do it anymore. I'm not going to be continuing on with the series. It's just very slow and atmospheric and that's fine but I have to have a little bit more meat, a little more plot, and a little more care about my characters and I just did not care for what was going on or the characters in these books. Another one is going to be Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. This is a very beloved series, has a movie, um, so I had very high expectations. Like this is like, I would think of it as like a classic and I didn't get it. I don't get it still to this day of why this book got so popular and became a classic. I was rather bored throughout the book. It was fine. It was a three star. It was nothing to write home about. She has since written multiple novels and recent releases in the same world and I do not care to continue on with those. The next one is going to be a more recent read and that's going to be Year One by Nora Roberts. I also thought that this one was going to be a five star read. I read it in November I think and it just didn't work for me. Um, I just didn't care because majority of the story was just telling about people's everyday lives and how they're surviving and that just wasn't a big enough plot to interest me. So I will not be continuing on with that series. Another unpopular opinion is going to be Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. I am not saying I don't like this book. I gave it three and a, three and a half ish stars. It was fine but for what I expected because everybody had hyped up the book so much it was disappointing because again it was just a three and a half star read. I didn't think the pacing was very well done in the middle of the story. I just uh, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to continue on or not. It depends on what kind of reviews come out about the second book. I am just not sure about it but it was definitely disappointing for me. And the last hot take I have for you guys on the most disappointing is going to be The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I've heard nothing but good reviews on this book. It's on everybody's best of the year list and for me it was a three star read. I have not read John Gwynn before. I am still interested in his Malice series but this series and I loved the main character. I love that in an adult fantasy book we're having this badass female main character. I really really loved that portion of the book. I just felt like the pacing was off. I felt it like it was a little bit slower than I would have liked and I didn't really care for the plot. It didn't didn't drag me in like I expected it to. Um, so that one was disappointing. I probably won't continue on with that series either because in this new year I am trying to not continue on with three star reads. I'm trying to avoid them for my life but I hope everybody else enjoys the heck out of the sequels of all these books and these books that I have on this list. Okay, that's it. That is all of my most disappointing reads of 2021.